Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number one of the UBL season five. And we are here in a very, very fun matchup, right? So we're up against Chase Seabad and his Detroit Steel Wings for week one. Um, and we have a really fun team. I think it's one of the best teams that I've ever really put together. But uh, there's going to be a lot of things going on here, right? But first and foremost, I should say that uh, I did lose some audio once again. So we'll be watching back on this match as it happened. But, um, and this one wasn't even really that fun of a story. It was just an accidental d deletion that happened while I was trying to check something in, in the audio. And crazily enough, this is actually probably like the third or so time that I'm trying to record this. Because even when I did some post re-recordings -re something wonky happened again with the audio so i'm gonna have to be, be more careful about how i handle the audio but we do have a bunch of battles coming up really really soon with the ebl but with all that said i just want to get right into this matchup right so he has a very very scary sand core with the gigalith and a sand rush combination of lycan rock and exedrill and overall he just has a bunch of pieces because my first reaction when i saw this team oh i have a lot of the best you know counters in, in, in the game between my tang growth my my escavalier possibly my my manda buzz right i can deal with a lot of what he, what he wants to do but then you dig a little bit deeper into his team and he has a lot of scary things like the toxicity i'm really afraid of the toxicity i really desperately don't want to lose to that thing so a few things that i'm doing here because i am so afraid of that toxicity is a really specially defensive stunfisk like this stunfisk is almost as specially defensive as a stunfisk can be as well as a scarf dar manatee now i desperately wanted to bring boots i think boots is really really strong here in this matchup but the only issue with that is that uh i would lose to a scarf toxicity right i really didn't have enough for that I, I didn't think so i felt like i needed that as kind of a fail safe and i say that's one of the biggest kind of things that kind of influenced my team building in this week uh and of course I'm, i start to worry about things like the exodural even though he didn't bring it this week but this is a spec straggle right and i actually found out that i didn't have to invest any speed at all to outspeed base 95s above base 95 which is his atu he only has the lichen rock which i think he's going to assume that's that it's faster than me and click either click excel rock every time or, you know, I, I should be able to, to, you know, take a hit or two. And the Excel Guard, which I can never reasonably expect to be faster than anyway. If he does bring it, it would, pr it would probably be pretty fast. So I really didn't see the need to put any more speed at all. So I put that all in all into defense. And I found a spread that allowed me to take one Adamant Choice Banded Earthquake and then hit it back potentially for an Oko. Um, which is also going to be another bit of, of, of team prep in here where it looked like Scald was actually going to be a roll to KO to a complete no bulk extra drill, but I in draft league you definitely have to expect uh some bulk because it's very rare that every mon needs all of its speed especially in a sand rush situation so i didn't know how much hp he would reinvest so i am packing hydro pump in order to ensure okos and really pressure that uh extra drill a ton so that i don't lose to it but it's not here so it's going to free up my dragon ball a lot to do a lot of what it needs to do here but overall, this is still going to be a really tough matchup, right? I definitely didn't expect the Configurgus to come. Tangle is always going to be an issue. But with that, I'm just going to get straight into the match. So I'm going to go right in. And I believe I lead off with the Dragapult. And uh, just in general, I really like the Dragapult lead. I think it's a really comfortable lead. Because it can really kind of manage most things. I generally, you know, make a Dragapult that can deal with most leads. And um, if there's any unfavorable leads, it can U-turn out pretty effortlessly. So, um, it's always going to be one of my go-to leads, I think. Um, it's going to be really difficult for Seabad to kind of choose a lead that I really don't like against this Dragon Ball. So, here, uh, he leads off Gigalith, which obviously screams lead rocks. Um, but in the end, I'm not the most concerned about that. I really wanted to stay in it and, and Hydro Pump. I really did. But, um, I didn't want to give that up, that information up too early, especially when, if I get this Gigalith a little bit damaged in the overall flow of the match then i could catch him off guard with that and that would be a lot more valuable to me than getting off early damage and allowing him a very very free switch in especially if he finds out early that i'm that i'm specs right um but um obviously tank growth is going to be the obvious play it's, it's the most it's my most defensive monster here and it's going to allow me to kind of eat, eat hits and maneuver around whatever he wants to do just kind of an annoy this gigalith um and i will be able to get a toxic off which i think is going to help me a lot because uh li like i just said a lot of what i want to do is going to come down to damaging this gigalith and kind of managing it um by catching it off guard later on in the match or just not letting it be uh, annoying because um if i do let it just get random hits off on a lot of my mons then that's going to be really detrimental to my, to the overall flow of the game and i don't not only that but um 
I do think that my tank growth here um, has lost a lot of its, you know, purpose by not needing to be the, the dedicated switch into the Excadrill. Although, one thing that I didn't really appreciate until Team Preview was just how valuable my, my tank growth would be for the overall kind of look of this match, right? Because um, it is really one of my only switch into the Grim Snarl. And um, I really do have to play it carefully, but at the same time, not, you know, carefully enough where it doesn't do anything until until Grimstar comes in. And um, I believe I, I, I get a leech heat off. I kind of half expecting this thing to, to want to switch out, just to kind of annoy anything that wants to switch out. Obviously, if I really thought that it was going to switch out, double toxic would be optimal, but leech heating here was kind of a solid mid-ground play where it covers him if he wants to switch out and if he wants to stay in. Um, it can kind of annoy the Sigalith and wear it down over time and, you know, get me a, a, a little bit healthy. He goes for a Rock Blast and gets five hits. Um, and again, this thing is as defensive as a tank growth can be, but uh, you can just see that five hits on a Rock Blast is just so annoying. And you, and you can just imagine that, that that amount of damage on like half my team would be so huge. And I think here, I'm kind of half expecting him to, to, to want to switch out now that he is lead seated. Um, but I'm also looking for defensive mons that can kind of eat a, a Rock Blast and kind of do other things that I, that I want to do here. Um, and again, my Dragapult is built really physically defensively. So here, I guess I kind of thought that I could... I, I mean, this is obviously a, a really ag aggressive switch that I just made. But it looks like what I'm thinking here is that my... Dragapult is so defensive that it can kind of um, eat, eat up a hit. I mean, hopefully I don't get hit five times again, and then I can kind of um, either maneuver around or try to catch off the, the Gigalith early on in the match, which would be so much value for me. It would be so much value for me. And here, uh, I just U-turn out on the Tangela. Obviously, I'm never going to out-damage the Tangela, um, at, at least before it gets to be an annoying with either Sleep Powder or or Leech Seed or Toxic. And here I go into the thing that can kind of manage all of them because with the Overcoat, I'm I'm immune to the Sleep Powder uh, and I'm immune to, to Toxic, but he goes for the knockoff, which really kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, one, one knockoff my Leftovers, which um, puts me in not great of a position here because I really did want my um, my Escavalier to do quite a bit in this matchup. Uh, so I, I put a little bit of speed in, in my Escavalier to kind of manage his slower threats. I, I really did expect the Slow King to come um so i have enough speed for a slow king i believe and maybe s some other things but he has he has a number of slow threats that i really wanted this to to kind of manage th the slower threats while dragapult and, and a handful of other mons manage the the faster threats and, and they can kind of um manage everything that i need to manage here right but uh you can see just rocks and knockoff it takes me down like a third of my hp and now escavalier is feeling really not the in the best right now but uh i i thought a lot about what, what i want to do i thought he, he might want to switch out I, I believe i hovered over knockoff for a, for a little bit or, or, hovered, or i hovered over s some other moves for um a, a little bit there but i ended up going for the mega horn and first of all i landed it and i did not expect it to to ko i really expected a more uh physically defensive tanker this was a lot more sp split defensive we talked after the match and found out that it was a, that it had a lot of more split defenses so I was able to straight up KO from that position, which was huge. Tangela opens up quite a bit that I kind of want to do here, right? And here I'm just trying to figure out in my head. I I, I can see myself. I can see the 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 live recorded me. Um, just kind of thinking about what I would do here, thinking about what what he would want to go go into. And he goes into the Cofagrius, which again. I really didn't expect this thing to want to come. I really didn't really put that much thought into how I would manage something like this. But I end up going straight out into my Mana Buzz. Now, obviously, Mana Buzz is going to be able to foul play. It's going to be able to put a little bit of pressure on. And and again, it's this is another situation where I'm kind of thinking about how I want to weaken this thing uh, in order to open up the door for my, for my Dragon Ball. Because I kind of expect him to not leave this thing out here you know, full, fully exposed for my Dragon Ball to kind of Shadow Ball in on this thing and KO it potentially. So I'm, I'm expecting something. I'm, I'm expecting that I'm going to need some type of damage on this before I really go, go, go in aggressively. But this also very strongly allows me to, to, to defog or, or, or at the very least him iron defensing makes me feel like I can, I can uh, do this for a little bit and kind of 
play play around here. But I believe I go for a a foul play here. Either that or I U-turn, but I would have to imagine that I get a little bit of damage off. No, I go straight up for a U-turn. Um But yeah, I mean all Ultimately, getting rocks off would was the number one priority because that means that I would be able to kind of um, allow in whatever I, I, I want to do while not um, damaging my 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 prospects later on in this match. For like my Tangrowth uh, is the best example, right? I really don't want my my Tangrowth, even even though I can regenerate her in in and out. Um, I really don't want to put myself in a position where I have to. Uh, deal with rocks and and all that nonsense uh he does knock off which is gonna hurt a, a little bit um but at, at the very least i my mana buzz dodge a knock off and not having to deal with getting my boots knocked off is really huge for for the situation right and basically i can allow my tangrowth to, to kind of take a brunt of these hits and kind of allow my tangrowth to um wear down this one and so leave my man buzz healthy enough where my man buzz can deal with a lot of the things that i need my man buzz to deal with obviously um but he does go for the body press and it does a lot more than i would have expected but i do get the leaf seed off um i, I can be a little bit annoying to this coffee grease and again leaf seed is always going to be like my somewhat of my default play where i don't know if he wants to either stay in or switch out but lead seed is uh, is generally really really uh, annoying for most mons that he would either want to switch out of or or um stay in on so lead seed is i feel like is, is always going to be a really really strong play um but regardless I, I will knock off um which is a mild mistake because i i mean okay so this entire turn was a little bit of me playing really really safely because i really didn't um expect my tank growth to i don't know i kind of felt as though my tank growth was a little bit expendable in, in, in this moment and it wasn't until a, a, a little bit later in the match where i re realized um having my tank growth around was it would have been a lot better it, it would have made the match feel a lot better as as it was flowing but the biggest thing here is that it gives me a free switch in. And yeah, of course, in the moment, I, I most valued a very, very free switch into my to, to my drag pole. And of course, that's important because it's going to allow me to either get a very free shadow ball or maneuver around with a U-turn. I believe I, I settle on U-turn eventually. No, I just shadow ball, um, which I mean, now a switch is going to be pretty obvious and not only that but it's going to allow him to very freely recognize that i'm a specs if he uh ends up and kind of um gaining that damage and that is pretty respectable damage for a for a resisted hit but now i have to get the heck out of here and if the fact well okay i, I was gonna say if if the fact that i did so much damage didn't confirm it already that me hard switching i would confirm it but i do have to respect that that thunder wave quite a bit here so i really don't think my play was ever going to be to stay in even if i wasn't specs but regardless um i'm not the most concerned i i feel like i have to pivot here no matter what happens i feel like um i i kind of felt in this moment that my man was was going to be the most expendable now because not only does um, my mana buzz, not only is my mana buzz going to be really able to take hits in this moment, but it's going to, um, but I, I really didn't expect him to get rocks up again, or, or at the very least, I felt strong and in a strong enough position that I'm able to prevent him from putting up rocks again. Um, even though I, again, like I've seen how defensive that, that Gigalith can be and how well it can take hits. So regardless, um, I believe I click user. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to position myself here. Um, this mana buzz is a complete pivot play just to kind of um, feel like I, I can position myself better. And uh, he goes out, ba he goes back out into the Gigalith. And you can already see, uh, just with toxic damage, with lead seed, and and all that stuff, uh, just taking a whole bunch of chip here and there, um, I've been able to weaken this thing quite a bit. And it's already, uh, it's going to be in the yellow before the turn's over because of the poison. And that's going to put me in a position where um, I feel like my. Excuse me, where I feel like my uh, Dragapult can come in here and kind of do what it needs to do. 
And like I mentioned earlier on in the match, this is exactly what I've been working towards, just kind of weakening this thing down such that my Dragapult can really threaten this thing. And now I go for the Hydro Pump um, because this obviously hits this and it covers any kind of switches out. Um, and, I, and this is the moment where I really have to be aggressive, right? This is the moment that, I bite, that I've been biting my time towards. Um, I've been playing the long game up until now and I really need to start, you know, damaging his team a little bit. And getting this thing out of the way would be a huge, huge step in terms of being able to do that. Uh, he hard switches out, but I'm excited because this Hydro Pump is going to do a lot of damage to something. And then I see the Grim Snore. I'm excited again. And uh, I miss the Hydro Pump, right? So, it's unfortunate. I mean, it is, it's going to be what it is. But, um, I'm not feeling the worst here. I still feel like I'm in a solid position. The Gigalith has taken a lot of chip damage overall. Um, it's still going to be in range of a lot of things that I want to do in this in this situation. So I end up wanting to go out into my Darmanic Chain because um, if, it, if anything, uh, again, he either goes for the Fury move or he goes for a, 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 th a Thunder Wave. I felt like my Darmanic Chain was the Mon that at least like, needed its speed still. So... Um, or, or at the very least, the thing that my Dramatic Chain would be able to, to, to cover, I feel like my, my Dragon Ball does almost as well. So, it felt like this was a play that I was in a position to make. But, uh, this thing comes back in, which, on a hard switch, really kind of surprised me a little bit. Especially when, uh, I don't know, he, he definitely hard expected me to switch, to, to make a double switch. But, uh, it did feel like somewhat of a, of a risky play. Because, I, I don't know, if I did want to double hydro pump then that would have been really awkward but at the same time he was making the plays that protected his, his grim snarl which i think he knew how valuable his grim snarl would be to the overall um look of the end game for the overall end game that he, that he wanted to construct for himself but he ends up switching out himself again um and i believe it lets me get off a of u-turn or maybe i earthquake here just expecting to get damage off on something um yeah i did i did click earthquake so so again this is me trying to Put myself in a position where I'm doing damage to the rest of his team and not just um, playing it as passively or as momentum based as I have been playing. This is me kind of trying to break the cycle and kind of deal damage, to, especially assuming that I can do a KO whatever wants to come in. But that um, Kafagrigus coming in looks like I could barely just take another Earthquake. And I really didn't want to risk it, especially when my Darmanian team was such a source of offensive presence for me. Um, so I felt like that was a play that I wasn't in a position to make, but um, but yeah, man, if that Earthquake was able to do a KO, then this would have been in a, a much different match, um, or at the very minimum, a much different endgame. But he took go for the Pain Split, which really surprised me in the moment, but a um, after the match, he, he told me so a, a really uh, interesting point that I just thought was funny. He, he said that um, he thought Pain Split was really good against my team because uh, so many of my mods are over base 100, and it's... And it was really funny because um, even a lot of my offensive mods just have a, a randomly high base HP stat. And uh, it's it's a solid point. Like, it really kind of threw me off. And it really uh, hit me in a way that I didn't expect. But now, um, I'm again in with my mana buzz. And I felt like, again, this is these are, these are the moments that I have to kind of take advantage of and get damage off on the team. So, I get a foul play off. He switches into Toxtricity. And here's a moment where I really felt like, no matter what happens, even if he gets a... Even if um, my Mandibuzz goes goes down here, it's so much more valuable for me to to not let him get up a a a uh, shift gear for free. So I have to continue to put pressure on this mon, no matter even if my Mandibuzz goes down, I have to not let him get a shift gear up for for nothing, right? So, um, but he ends up making a double switch out, bringing in the Gigalith. I'm not e maybe expecting me to, to to double switch or or, or make a U-turn play. Looking back on it, um. The play didn't make the most sense because even though yes, I put I I I deal damage in exchange for him shift gearing. Um My Stun Fist would have always been able to, to to go through any like no matter what HP it probably was. So I don't know. Once I got that first foul play off, I don't think it mattered after that, but regardless, um this does allow me to kind of deal a lot of damage to the Gigalith. And here I kind of wanted to roost up for free because I really felt like I needed this thing as as a counter to to something else so what i really did not want to happen was for me to 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 attack into it be low and then and then be, be able to get um to get uh re revenge by something else that wants to come in because it really did feel like this mana buzz was still such a really strong pivot for me and then he ends up being rest and i honestly thought that i lost this game in this in, in this moment right because i thought truthfully that I did not have a way to break this Gigalith af after this point, and uh, I would just eventually get worn down and lose to this thing straight up. Um, but 
I kind of have to pull myself a little bit to, uh, I, I, I have to pull myself together a little bit in this moment to kind of figure out how I want to play the, the rest of this, um, with the rest of these turns. And ultimately, I guess I decide that it's going to be more worth it to, to just get some damage off than to switch out. Although, I've, you can see it that I was in my menus. I was hard considering switching, hard switching, or you turning out into my Escavalier. And in retrospect, that obviously would have been the better play. Um, but, um, yeah, again, I was honestly still mildly flustered by just how I wanted to play this out, knowing that it's going to be incredibly difficult for me to continue to break this this mod but now that he's thrown out thrown at the toxic it made me feel like i was free to kind of go into this thing and like i said because this thing is, is so defensive it, it did make me feel free to, to switch this thing out on either a a a, ro a rock blast or stealth rocks i felt like either of those plays i would have been fine obviously the no, no, toxic would have been horrible but i didn't think that he was in a position to kind of make that play and now i can hydro pump reasonably freely because um, I felt like I was in a solid position to kind of just do damage against this team. I, I, I got this thing in for free. My Mandibus can still defog on, on, on whatever wants to come in. Although that play is just, I don't know, mildly su surprising given the fact that I could, that I, it looks like foul play would have been a three KO. So I could have foul played again, gotten this thing super low. And even if this thing clicks rocks, I can defog and give up my, my Mandibus uh, to keep rocks off the field no matter what happens and and I don't know I don't know it felt like I was always in a position to kind of win that 1v1 but it does allow me to get this thing in for free and now um this thing comes in and uh I believe I go out into I go out again into Darmanitan potentially question mark I, ha I have to imagine I do because um he, he, he's already shown to be a break I still have to respect the Thunder Wave um, I really don't want to do anything against this, this Thunder Wave here, and I end up hard switching out into my Escavalier. Now, again, I do want to reiterate that my Escavalier was built to kind of manage a lot of his slower threats. He did have a lot of slower threats that didn't end up showing up to this match, and he just revealed the Thunder Wave. And that's exactly what I was trying to respect in this moment, right? Um, even though I really did want to try and hit it with a Hydro Pump, right? So, if he... I thought that Hydro... I knew that, um... Thunder Wave was a possibility, but I really wanted to to click Hydro Pump anyway and just punish it if we did go for it, but it didn't feel like I was in, in a position to make that play, right? Especially when I still had rocks to get off the field, and I still, and I still had a little bit of pivoting to do in, in the rest of this match, right? So anyway, this Escavalier was kind of built around dealing with a lot of his slower threats and maybe taking a hit from, from Lycan Rock or something like that, but um, when I was in this position, this was not a position that I imagined myself being in, right? And I think I just kind of lost track of the fact that this thing could uh, could obviously have um, fire punch. And spoiler alert for like five seconds from now, he, he goes for fire punch, right? But I, I say that to say that um, I think a lot of my team building comes down to me kind of imagining situations in my head and imagining my, my like way out of them. Um, so when a situation comes up like this that I really don't just like imagine in, in team building and I don't like actively try to build or, 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 or play around, it becomes difficult to, for me to kind of, um, play through this situation, um, without that. And like I said, I, I think just the fact that I'd never imagined myself in this position in, in the pregame put me in a position where, um, I, uh, forgot about fire punch and i just got fire punched here and that's going to be the end of my escavalier when i could have mildly easily pulled some sort of a double switch or made something happen here and now i'm and i'm considering going into this thing but i i, I think yeah I, I play super protective of my of my stun fist because it is my number one answer to any kind of toxicity and i really don't want to let this thing go down for any reason whatsoever now um, I go into my Mandibus because this is essentially going to be a sack in exchange for Defog because um, I've seen before that I can take a Sphere Break and I know that's going to be the strongest hit that it has for me and I feel like it's going to be worth it as long as I can get a Defog off. Um, which again goes back to that that moment a, a few turns ago when I was saying that I could have 3 KO'd that Gigalith with foul play, I would have 100% give, given up this Mandibuzz to keep rocks off the field, which is, is, is exactly what I do here. And um, I might give up my Mandibuzz in this situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, just to go back a, a, a little bit as well, you, you guys can see a, a little bit of what I meant by 
not having the Tangrowth around kind of made this made me playing around this um this Grimmsnarl a lot more restrictive and I have to you know make a bunch of plays and sacks that I really don't want to um in exchange for again um because of the fact that I gave up my Tangrowth early on in this matchup but but again ultimately I, I give up my main buzz um I could have made this a lot cleaner of an exchange if I had continued to 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 pressure that Gigalith and um continue to to foul play but um yeah, that was just going to be the position I guess we found ourselves in. Um, I, I mean, I, this is honestly not something that I'm realizing until right now. But if I had continued to keep up pressure with the foul play and then defogged on, on the next turn, it would have kept my my Escavalier at full HP. Uh, which again uh, is not something that I realized until just now. But um, it's one of those little kind of one of those little nuances to to, to a match that. Uh, He's really interesting. Now, I bring in my Darmanitan. I, I I feel like it's, it's important to say, right? He, he's already revealed Prankster Thunder Wave, obviously. But this is a mod that I didn't feel like it needed its its HP as much anymore. And no matter what, if I bring in my Darmanitan, it gets a KO. Because either he he go, he tries to damage me with with some type of dark move, probably Darkest Lariat or something. Um, and I get and I KO the Grimmsnarl straight up. If he tries to Thunder Wave me, then I KO the Grimmsnarl straight up. If he switches out, then I get a KO straight up. Nothing or, or, or I suppose the Lycan Rock can take it, but it's going to be significantly um, weakened. And that's exactly what I need, right? So, uh, no matter what, Darmanitan gets in here, gets a KO, no matter what happens. Um, but this Lycan Rock is in here, and I really have to decide on what I, what to do. Um, because, honestly, I'm, 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 a lot of my thinking here is whether or not I really need this Darmanitan for the endgame that we're trying to construct. This is a three-on-three. -three. Um... But he's in a lot better position with his three than I am with my three. His three put on a lot more pressure than my three do, and or or, or at the very least, it's my three are very situational. I have to get, I have to construct a game that's the most that's the that's the that's gonna put me in the best situational possibility, the best situational position that I need to be in, right? So I I ultimately decide to go out into my dragon pole because because again because my dragon pole is so um bulky. I can take two Excel Rocks, no problem. And um, because he's going to think that I'm faster, he's going to be forced into, into Excel Rocking twice. It's going to let, let me get a free Hydro Pump off. And I'm going to be able to kind of manage whatever he wants to do here, right? But he pulls out a double switch. He probably expected me to want to go into Sunfish or something. I'm not too, too sure. But um, I really want to attack in, in, into this thing. Um, I don't for, I mean, whatever reason. I could have Hydro Pumped or something. I... Hydro Pump would have covered the, the rest of the team, but I, I don't know. I guess I'm a, a lord, and I clicked U-turn on the switch. And again, this is going to put me in the exact same situation. My Dermanitan gets in here, and it's going to KO something without any questions asked. Or put the Dragapult in a position, or sorry, put the Lycanroc in a position that it doesn't want to be in because I'm going to be able to manage it with my Stun Fisk or my, or my uh, other thing. So... Uh, I, there's no button to click but Flare Blitz, right? And right now, I'm, I'm still continuing to think out my, my endgame, right? Because I I think, if anything, I, um, I, I can see myself. And I think what I'm doing is, is I'm running calcs right now because I'm trying to figure out um, exactly how much damage a really offensive Lycan Rock can do to my Dragon Ball. Because my Dragon Ball, again, is really defensive and, and trying to calc out what worst case scenario is if this Lycan Rock just clicks um, Excel Rock twice. And I know eventually I, I, I figure out that my Lycan Rock or that my Dragon Ball can take two hits from the Lycan Rock, right? So ultimately I I kind of see my see the end game that that I want to play out in my head, right? And uh let's see here. Uh in comes the Lycan Rock. And I believe part of me says that I give this I give up this Armanitan. I'm, yeah, I give this our Manitan, and I'm trying to recall why. It has to Excel Rock me, and I, d I don't... Hmm. Because even now, just thinking back on it, it, I mean, it does seem to me like like um, like um switching out into the Stun Fist to take a hit is optimal, I guess. I guess I feared Drill Run on against my Stun Fist. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe I calced it, and maybe um, 
M maybe uh, I wasn't able to take a, a, a an XL rock into a drill run, but either way, or at the very least, I, I wasn't confident in the fact that I could. But uh, stun fist probably would have been better because even if I give up the stun fist, it allows in my drag bolt. My drag bolt can attack, and then it leaves in that same uh, drag bolt versus Darmanitan situation that I've been putting myself into. So. I don't know, possible misplay on my part, I'm not too too sure, but regardless, I'm, I'm still feeling a really strong endgame with my Sunfisk and my Dragon Bolt here, because, um, again, I'm really confident that I can take uh, a 2XL Rocks if I have to, and even though I, I don't have to take 2XL Rocks, I only need to take the one, although it does look like, uh, uh, with that damage that I can take two, I can Hydro Pump once, and I'm putting that, 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 um, that, uh, Grimstar in the same position again where uh thunder wave does, doesn't even make sense anymore because i could hit it really hard or uh he, he goes for an attack and i can ko it with hydro bomb so i think i've finally done it i think i finally put myself in this end game where i really needed to and it felt it was such a relief kind of looking over i i, I think i'm just looking over cows at this point just trying to confirm that yes hydro pump is, is going to do it and i miss another hydro pump right so I went for, I believe, four Hydro Pumps here. I missed two of them. Uh, which is not great, but... I don't know. At this point, I'm honestly feeling like I lost it. Like, Stunfisk... I, I played too conservatively with Stunfisk. And Stunfisk would have obviously been able to help out this endgame a little bit. But, um, again, even now, looking back on it... Um, I, I, I made a couple misplays that would have put my... My... Uh, my escavalier in a position to at least take one or two hits maybe kind of lessen this um pressure on my stun fist and my dragapult or do something in in this overall end game but uh i guess we're here right and i have to kind of concede uh he's gonna be able to spear break me we take that okay uh i do have sludge wave but he's gonna be able to, to lower my special attack and we see how much sludge wave does and it's not doing a lot but we got the poison right and then and it's when i start to see the poison where i'm starting to think can we do this because we're not only counteracting leftovers but we're i believe doing more than leftovers right or or does it still just counteract them either, either way um it's especially when i see myself kind of get leftovers back when i'm thinking oh maybe i can take three spear breaks and then I see the poison bring him to the yellow. Yeah, it, it does look like it doesn't do more than leftovers. So I'm being helped by by my, by my own leftovers and his poison. Um, and honestly, looking back on it, another thing that, that I realized when looking back on it was um, maybe poison was a little bit of a hindrance here because potentially um, Spirit Break could have gotten the 30% static off. And if that was the case, then maybe I can make something happen here. But uh we're here we're here with the poison and it's looking like spear break is going to be a really dubious three ko right it does look like i'm i could maybe take three but i'm gonna have to take three and get one final or uh, sludge wave off but i'm really starting to feel it now it's really starting to feel possible here uh it's gonna depend on whether or not i can make everything happen and we get ko'd again if we were just able to take one more and hit this thing back with a sludge wave I think it would have relied on poison. I think I, th I think it still would have relied on poison damage to kind of do it in the end. But I really think I should have won that match with a couple of hydro pump hits, right? So two those two hydro pumps that missed were on the Grim Snarl. So that Grim Snarl just avoids hydro pumps like a monster, and it put me in a really awkward position where I just didn't have enough damage output for the Grim Snarl. And that Grim Snarl, I believe, took four KOs in this match and never got KO'd itself. Um, and even just a little bit more damage onto the Grim Snarl um, would have helped me out there. I don't know. Oh, it was really tough. Obviously, I I made some misplays. I could have played a lot of things better, but that's gonna be week one. Uh, it was a true true heartbreaker. I really thought I had all the tools to kind of win the match, but it didn't end up happening the way that I needed to. And if just Hydro Pump could have hit one more time, then this was a match that we could have won. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL as well as more weeks of uh, other stuff that is yet to come. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be once again out.